everyone and welcome to the first part in the tutorial series on how to design a fleet that's properly space worthy. Fair warning, this first part is purely theoretical, so if you don't think like you are interested in the background or in the overall picture of what it means to design a ship in Aurora, feel free to pass to the next uh, part that is going to deal with engines and engine design and it will be directly coming from the game itself. However, I believe that to make a set of tutorial videos on how to do something properly, you need to first see the overall picture. And in Aurora, designing ships is one of the best things that the game can offer you. It's creative, it's variable, and you can do pretty much anything you want in Aurora. It's also, for that reason, the most challenging part of the game. So having a proper idea of what you want to do before you do it is really, 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 really important. Now, first advice I can give you as far as ship design goes is do your research. Wikipedia and many other web pages have insane amount of information on how the real world navies work. I cannot stress it enough that as the game will progress and you will not be entirely sure on how you are trying to compose your fleet, you will get into situations where chaos will reign. There is dozens or hundreds of possible ship uses or ship classes that you can uh, have and create. However, you don't need them all, but if you create some, you should have an idea on what they are. And now I'm talking about things like, what is a frigate? What is a cruiser? What is a corvette? What is a battle cruiser? You need to have a system in the ships you design, because if you want, eventually, trust me, you will have dozens and dozens of ships and you will get lost in what you created and how to properly use them together. This goes also for things like bombers, uh, attack craft, what is a scout and stuff like that. You should have a clear idea of what the ship you are designing is going to be named and what is it going to do. This is connected with a second part that you need to focus on clearly and 100% of time and that is create your fleets so that they can work together. In Aurora, I saw many people do the mistake of creating ships that are incompatible or have functions that are not clearly stating what is this ship doing and what is this ship doing. The mistake usually comes from the idea that every ship could be able to do everything. So you have Corvette-sized ships that are trying to be a battle cruiser, and battle cruiser ships that are trying to be large corvettes. Create a plan and stick to it. Another point, always create ships that are useful in here and now. You can, of course, make ships that will be useful in the future, but they will just sit the duck. The important part is build ships when you need them, and for specific targets. I know that Aurora usually is think ahead of time, but you know, to, for example, to have a missile hauler when you are not even using missiles is worthless. I know this example is a bit far-fetched, but it should carry the message through. If you don't encounter even any enemy races, or if you don't plan to even jump anywhere, you don't need to have large battleships. I'm saying this mainly because Aurora has maintenance costs, Aurora has fuel costs, and Aurora will take away resources from you in the beginning if you start too big. So always try to be economical, try to have an idea about what you're doing and why you are designing this ship and not something else. You need to make ships that are working for you as they are now. Of course, you can make them better later on, but is it worth building it now? If the answer is yes, build it now. This is 
could also connect it to the last advice that I would uh, give you in this theoretical start to designing. And that is, always be mindful of your limitations and be wary of expanding them too far. Now, I'm speaking from experience. If you make ships, you will say, okay, this ship has 5,000 tons and I have a 5,000 ton shipyard. But if I would be able to have a 5,500 ton shipyard, I could make this ship better. So you expand your shipyard and you build a larger ship. And this goes on and on and on. And then in the end, you're designing ships that are incredibly big. And then every time you need to introduce a new kind of ship, retooling cost, retooling time, and stuff like that goes into years and years of in-game time. And it's not really, you know, all that useful. You can make ships that are small and still work well. There actually really never was any need in my life, at least in what could be called start and mid-game, to design a ship, and now I'm not talking about cargo ships, that's something completely different, but as far as military ships, because we're mostly going to be dealing with military here, to design them too big, and by too big I mean above 15,000 tons. Anything that goes beyond that will have such a huge cost for retooling and maintenance that it will cost you an arm and a leg. Now, of course, you can create a battle cruiser, but be wary of what each ship is. This, is. this comes back to the point number one. Make a plan, make a strategic plan, make a clear point of how big frigates will be, how big cruisers will be, how big battleships will be, and have a several possible shipyards that will be able to do this. Each will be doing its own thing. So, for example, you will have one large shipyard which will be dealing with the flagships, and one shipyard that will be dealing with corvettes, one shipyard that will be dealing with cruisers. That way you can always have a system in what you're trying to do. So, all in all, if I go through this, the advice I would like to give you before we even start looking at the ship design tutorials is inspire yourself from real world. You can't go wrong with that. Create ships that work together and each has a specific role. Always create ships that are useful in the here and now. Avoid the ones that you have no use for at this point. Always know what you want to design before you even start. Don't try to design a ship doing everything because you will ultimately fail. And last but not least, always be mindful of your limitation and be wary of expanding them too far. Now, I'm gonna get to these points in the videos that are going to follow this one, but I just thought I would make it clear in the beginning, because it's important to have this on your mind all the time. Yes, I fail at that from time to time, but it's good to have a set of rules that you can look at when you take a step back and think about what you're doing at the point in the game. So I hope you enjoyed this first uh, tutorial video. I know it's uh, a lot of theory in the beginning and not much clear, but you will see the reasonable applications when we start designing in the future episodes. So again, I hope you enjoyed and let's move on to the first tutorial video which will deal with an exact design and that's going to be engines.